Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, the last video of 2020, let's talk about pH. Grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage, stand by. Welcome back fishy folks. Before we get started, please, please, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Go ahead and then boop with a B, the notification bell. And of course, when we're done, check out my website, michaelsfishroom.com, where we are still shipping even though it's cold because I have confidence in my shipping methods. Anyway, today we're gonna talk about pH, uh, a little bit about what it is, and three different testing methods. And uh, let's get started. The first thing I want to say about pH is don't chase pH. Actually, let's rewind. What is pH? Well, pH is how acidic or how basic a uh, liquid solution is. In our case, fish tank water. Uh, the lower the pH, the more acidic. The higher the pH, the more basic. Seven being neutral. Typically, you'll see uh, pH for fish tanks anywhere between six and eight. Uh, there are some species that like it higher. Um, pH is one of those things that a very quick change in pH will kill your fish very quickly. Uh, more so than I believe most other water parameters. Uh, temperature also being one of the big ones. But that's why you don't want to chase pH. You don't want to try to change pH. You don't want to add uh, chemicals or, or things you buy at the local fish store on eBay, on Amazon that change your pH. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I can give is keep fish that match your pH. Now, let's talk about pH for a second and, and fish. Typically, when you start researching a fish that you want to buy and keep, there's a pH range. And those ranges are a little misleading because those ranges are uh, the pH that they have in the wild. So, a lot of fish from South America like um, a lower pH, a little bit more acidic water. And so you might see something from, you know, 6.0 to 7.0, and your water is 7.4. Now, that doesn't mean you can't keep them. If the fish you're looking to buy are all tank raised and tank bred, more than likely their PA, they can handle a different pH. A good rule of thumb is if you're going to buy from a breeder, ask what their pH is. Now, pH is one of those things that some fish acclimate well to slowly, and some fish do not. Guppies and plecos, for the most part, especially the ones that I sell, uh, acclimate well to a wide variety of pH. My pH is, well, we'll see what my pH is, but I'm thinking my pH is about seven. Uh, but that doesn't mean if your pH is 6.4 to say 7.8, you can't keep the fish. You just need to acclimate them slowly, uh, not quickly. So let's talk about some testing methods for pH, okay guys? So the most common probably is the master test kit or API pH tester. Now there's two solutions, there's a high and a low. I'm only gonna talk about, or a high and a regular I should say. I'm only gonna talk about the regular because that's what I have. Now this, this test, while it's very common, requires a glass test tube which breaks, requires the testing solution, some method of adding fish tank water to the solution, which I use this little syringe. And uh, then of course you have your scale to read. Now pH is one of those scales on this chart that's fairly easy to, to read. Um, sometimes the nitrate is a little harder. What's another method of testing pH? Well, you can use test strips. I like the Tetra test strips best. I've tried uh, regular like pool test strips, not really impressed. Um, and I've tried the uh, API test strips. They seem to be okay. The thing about test strips, they get a very bad rap from people because people don't understand them. The biggest thing with test strips, and I've done videos on this, is you gotta keep the, the top tight. If you keep the cap tight, no moisture will get in and they don't get ruined. They do have a shelf life though. Once you open them, uh, there's a certain shelf life, which I, for the life of me, I can't remember. Uh, so these are five in one test strips. You can also buy just pH test strips like at a pool store. And the third method that I'm gonna talk about it is a electronic pH meter. Now I picked this up on Amazon. I'll put an affiliate link down below. 
uh, I think it was about 14 bucks. And I've used uh, TDS and pH meters before. The thing I don't like about them is you have to calibrate them. Now this one I've already calibrated. I don't really want to go over the calibration procedure because, you know, there's videos on it. There's China instructions on it. It's, it's pretty simple, but anyway. So it does have to be calibrated. I calibrate it now and then uh, I will, if I were to use this all the time, I calibrate it after a certain amount of uses or a certain amount of time. And uh, the pH meter is pretty simple to use. Um, I'm going to show you how to use it, but you know, here's what it looks like. Here's the sensor that, that gets dipped in the water and uh, then you, you know, you read your measurements. So here we go, folks. We're going to test some pH now. All right, fishy folks, let's test some pH. Now, I'm gonna do this strictly by the book. So, uh, the pH test kit for API is fairly straightforward. Fill a clean test tube with five milliliters of water. Add three drops of pH solution, holding dropper bottle upside down in a completely vertical fashion to assure uniformly of the drops. Vertical fashion, folks. Cap the test tube and invert the tube several times to mix the solution. Read the test results by matching the color chart in a well-lit area. So, here's my little syringe that I'm going to grab some water from. I'm going to grab it from the pink flamingo tank right here. Now, this test tube, this uh, syringe happens to be a 5 millimeter syringe. I will put links, like I said, to everything that I talk about here. There, they will be Amazon affiliate links. You know what that means. Billions and billions of dollars in my pocket just by you guys thinking about it. Fill it up. I always shake the solutions just because that's what I'm used to. And these are childproof caps, which means you have to push down and turn. I don't know how that makes it childproof. My, my child could open that. I almost spilled this. Vertical fashion three drops one two three cap it shake it shake it like a polaroid picture all right sorry so there's my solution there you go i'm thinking about seven well you can't see that i'm thinking about seven maybe even a little lower than seven yeah maybe 6.8 my ph is a little low that's low for me that's the API uh, tester from the master tester. You can buy just pH. Now, let's grab a test strip and see, because I want to see, how do we know which is most accurate? We don't, but I'm going to see what they say. All right, here's a test strip. Now, here's the thing about test strips. Um, like I said, you do have to keep the, <clears throat> the uh, bottle closed and tight. And uh, let's read these instructions. Remove one test strip from the bottle and replace cap tightly. Done. Hold strip at the end with no pads. Dip strip in the aquarium water for one second. Do not shake excess water off. Do not shake excess water from the strip. Hold strip level for 60 seconds. Compare test strip colors to scale on bottle. So, I'm going to grab the test strip without touching the pads. Then, I'm gonna dip and wait 60 seconds. Dip for one second, put in a vertical fashion. Hey Siri, set a timer for 60 seconds. Yes. Set a timer for 60 seconds. Okay, one minute and counting. I love technology. All right folks, while we're waiting the 60 seconds, let's talk about the pH meter. Now, I like them for their simplicity. Um, however, they are more expensive than the other ones and they do need to be calibrated. So pros and cons with both. Um, while, like I said, we're waiting for this, why don't you guys go ahead, refill your healthy snack and beverage. I'll be right back. All right, fishy folks, our timer should be going off any second now, two, one, Timer's done. It's vibrating on my arm. All right, let's read our pH. So with the uh, test strips, there's a little color chart and uh, let's find the pH. Eh. Hard, to, hard to lift up, so I'm gonna just cheat and do that. 
And all right, pH. Where is pH? There it is, it's on the bottom. So this says, let's just show you the color chart, just says about 6.8 as well. They seem pretty accurate to each other. I'm gonna say that if they both say 6.8, my water's probably 6.8, which like I said, a little low. Now we're gonna do the pH tester. The big daddy of the testing solution, of the testing options. Now, these are in, I don't wanna offend anyone, I know they're snowflakes, but Chinglish, which is Chinese English. Now I'm fluent in Jinglish, which is Japanese English, cause you know I work with Japanese people. Chinglish is a little bit different, however, I'm pretty good at it. So, calibration steps, I've done it. Operation, remove the protective cap and protective film from the screen. I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna follow the directions. I normally wouldn't remove the protective film from the screen until it comes off, but I wanna follow directions to the T. First, rinse the electro with distilled water and dry it with filter paper, done that. Turn the meter on by pressing the on off key. Immerse the pH meter electrode in the solution to be te tested. Cannot be over the immersion line. That means dip it in the uh, fish tank. Don't submerge it. Stir gently and wait around 30 seconds till the reading stabilized. After finished, clear the electro with pure water. Turn the meter off by pressing the on-off key. Always replace your protective cap after use. All right, folks, here we go. Hey, Siri. Set a timer for 30 seconds. And we're stirring. And our timer's done. And this says seven. Well, what does it say now? Now it says six point. Yeah, it's about seven. Fluctuates a little bit. All right, so we have 6.8, 6.8, seven, which is most accurate. Is it 6.9? Doesn't matter. Unless you're trying to breed very hard to breed fish that need very, very specific water qualities, I don't think it matters that much. If I were to buy fish uh, from someone who has water that's seven and I have 6.8, I wouldn't think twice. If I were to uh, buy fish from someone who has water of 6.8 and I have seven, I wouldn't think twice. Also, I know there's some variance because I'm just a dumb guy with a camera testing water. I'm not a chemist or a chemical engineer or anyone who works with chemistry. So, all that said, a couple things to take away from this. There are many ways to test pH. I do not believe that if done correctly, this is less accurate than this. I do not believe this is necessary. However, it is very easy and is more accurate, especially if you're looking to breed fish that require very specific pH ranges. Any questions, guys, let me know down in the comments below. Also, let me know how you guys test your pH. Have a great day. Hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to the last video of 2020 on Michael's Fish Room. It's really not the last video of 2020. It is. Welcome back to the last video. Yeah, that that actually did make sense. Unfortunately, I screwed it up. So the first thing I want to say about pH, and I see this a lot, <sighs> puberty. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a Brady kid. <sighs> My pH is about, we'll see what it is actually, because we're going to test it. I'm going to say it's about 7, 7.2. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, if you buy fish from anywhere, this is dumb. If you keep the tap tight, the tap tight, wow. Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to the last Michael's Fish Room video of 2020. Hope everyone is doing okay and looking forward to the new year. Why don't you guys grab yourself a healthy snack and beverage and stand by. Be nice if you knew what you were standing by for. It was a great intro, except for the fact I didn't tell you what you're standing by for, so yeah. Hiya fishy folks and welcome back. I'm not, that's not, that's dumb. <laughs>